And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who is guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous Go Farther Gasoline, invites you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, A Matter of Patience. When the big car swung in the drive, the front door to the house was already open. A woman on the front porch waiting to speak to John Granger as he stepped from the car and started up the porch steps. It was the housekeeper, and she was very excited, upset. John Granger could tell it even before she spoke. And he also knew that her excitement concerned his wife, Lillian. Mr. Granger! I'm so glad you're home. What is it, Mrs. Alberts? What's wrong? Is Mrs. Mrs. Gr- Granger, yes. There's been an accident. She cut her wrist. Dr. Phillips is with her now upstairs. Well, I'll go oh, right dear, up. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, oh, here's the doctor. Oh, it's all right, Mrs. Alberts. Nothing to get excited about. Oh, oh, hello, Granger. Is Lillian all right? Yes, yes. Scarcely a scratch. I've given her a sedative. Well, can I do anything? No, no. However, I'd like to talk to you a moment if, um, well, if we, uh... uh, uh, uh excuse us, Mrs. Alberts. Uh, certainly. Uh, call if you need me, Mr. Granger. And good night, Dr. Good night. Well, Doctor? Then I'll come straight to the point, Granger. Your father-in-law asked me to talk to you. Frankly, D.J. is very worried about his daughter. I see. Then you don't think Lillian cut her wrist accidentally? She says it was an accident. But you don't believe it. Well, she's been upset lately over the diet I put her on. Seems to have an abnormal craving for sweets. They're bad for her. Yes, I know. Furthermore, I'm going to have to make her diet even more strict. No sweets of any kind. So that won't be easy with Lillian. You're right. It, she should have a hobby of some kind, Granger. Get her mind off herself. I, I was wondering, as a girl, she used to like photography. Oh, yes. Do uh, you think she should get interested in it again? Well, I think it would help greatly. Well, I'll certainly do what I can, Doctor. I mean in seeing that she adheres to the diet and help her get started on her hobby. <laughs> But you know all about Lillian, don't you, John? You're certain it was an accident, the way she cut her wrist. But the others believe she actually tried to take her life. In these past years, there have been times when you've wished she would, haven't you? You felt that she's nagged, held you down. And you've had a far different marriage than the one you planned. Particularly since learning that your wife, Lillian, had no money in her own name. That her father holds everything in a tight ring. The partnership in Dawson and Company which you expected but haven't received. But somehow now you believe you can uh, remedy the situation. And that's why you're not at all alarmed the next morning when your father-in-law calls you into his office. I've just talked to Dr. Phillips on the phone, John. Yes, D.J.? Yes. Yes, and I've been talking to a few other people, too. Just how long has Eloise Tracy been your secretary? Oh, a couple of months, I'd say. Mm -hmm. And in the last two months, you've scarcely spent one evening at home. Well, I've had a lot of overtime work to do. Where? In nightclubs? You and Eloise have been seen in every club on the Sunset Strip. Just dropping in for a bite to eat after work. Well, I'll put a stop to that. Now, I'm not going to fire Eloise. It probably isn't her fault. But I'll exchange secretaries with you for the present. You can have Miss Summers. Miss Summers? Well, she's been your private secretary for years. You couldn't get along without her. Mm, perhaps not. But I'd make any sacrifice for my daughter's happiness. Now, do you realize that if this came to Lillian's attention, it would kill her? I'm not so sure about that. Well, I am. 
Lillian is a sensitive girl. That's a matter of opinion, DJ. Oh, she loves you devotedly. You're her whole life. Can't you see if anything happened to your marriage that Lillian might take the most desperate steps? Well, she'd stop at nothing. Has it ever occurred to you, DJ, that I might want to leave Lillian? What? I won't stand for it, you hear? I won't stand for oh, it. Oh, now take it easy, DJ. Maybe we can come to terms. What do you mean, terms? I mean, make me a partner in the firm. And I'll agree to stay with Lillian. Anything you say. A partner? Why, this is practically blackmail. Yes, isn't it? I see. So our cards are on the table. All right. You will be a partner in the firm. However, the stock that I transfer will be placed in Lillian's name. <laughs> a deal, John? A hard bargain, DJ. But a deal. Yes. It isn't exactly what you wanted, is it, John? But you feel certain that things will work out. You manage to have a few words with Eloise. Tell her that you can't see so much of each other for a while, at least not in public. Then you leave the office early and go home. You find Mrs. Alberts in the kitchen. Question her about the whereabouts of Lillian. Uh, where did you say Mrs. Alberts? In the tool shed? Yes. Isn't it wonderful, Mr. Granger? She's directing the carpenters. They're making the shed into a studio for Mrs. Granger's photography. Oh, yes, I see. Yes, a dark room and everything. Oh, Mr. Granger, you don't know how happy it makes me to see Mrs. Granger taking a real interest in something again. Yes, yes, it's fine, Mrs. Alberts. I'd better go out and see what's going on. Hey, Mrs. Granger. Hello, Lillian. Man just finishing up, I see. Yes, they've been working so hard all day. They've really earned the rest. Good night, Mrs. Granger. Good night, Fred. They're so nice. Oh, Father called me. Just think of you becoming a partner in Father's firm. Well, your father's a very fine man, Lillian. He's very good to us. But you are actually the partner. It doesn't matter. As long as we're married, everything's for both of us, John. Yes. I've always felt that you and Father didn't like each other too much. Oh, of course we do. How can we help it? But we both have your best interests at heart. I wish I could really believe that. Sometimes I've doubted that you really loved me, John. Oh, I'm sorry if I've seemed to neglect you, but it's been business. I've tried to make good in your father's firm by hard work. I've wanted to build a secure future for the two of us, of course. And I'm going to try to do my part, then, by being more cheerful. I'm not going to let anything worry or depress me, and I'm going to work hard on my photography, and and I'm going to diet very strictly. Oh, Never mind that part. We can't let them bully you too much. We've had little secrets before. We'll simply have another. I don't understand. Well, here. Here, darling, I, I brought you these. John, chocolates. My favorites, too. Yes, dear. I know what a craving you have for sweets. Tonight, I'd like to have a little chat, especially with you motorists who buy most any brand of gasoline that happens to be convenient because you think gasoline is gasoline. You'd change your mind in a hurry if you'd spend some time around signal service stations, as I do, listening to comments of regular signal customers. You'd hear them telling about records they've kept, which prove the good mileage which has made signal famous as the go-farther gasoline. You'd hear them bragging about their car's performance, its lively getaway and the smooth, quiet way it walks up hills in high since they switched to signal. What's more, there are now so many drivers like this who won't be satisfied with anything less than signal. This summer has been by far the biggest summer in the entire history of Signal Oil Company. Well, friends, when a gasoline is increasing so in popularity, it seems to me you just naturally want to find out what it is about that gasoline which makes motorists prefer it. There's no better time to find out than with your very next tank full of gasoline. No better place to get it than at the very next signal station you see.
Well, John, it's going differently than you'd hoped and planned for. But you decide to be patient. Wait your time. Also, you can count on Lillian to help make your freedom complete. Her desire for sweets is something that you can quietly take advantage of. Your uh, little secret. You continue to see Eloise Tracy, another secret, and something else over which you must exercise patience. But you manage to play your part well for Lillian's father. And one day, some weeks later, he again called you into his office, this time for a more pleasant conversation. Well, John, my boy, how do you like it? Wow, a new letterhead, Dawson, Granger, and Company. That looks great, D.J. Well, I like it myself, now that I'm used to the idea. Well, thanks, thanks, D.J. <laughs> Frankly, at first, I didn't feel that you were the man for Lillian. But I guess I was wrong. She seems very happy lately. Yeah, she's become very interested in her amateur photography. That was a good idea Dr. Phillips had. He's greatly encouraged. I talked to him on the phone yesterday. He, uh, he's still concerned about her general health, however. Oh, is that so? I think she's been sticking pretty close to the diet he gave her. Yeah, as long as she's happy, that's all that matters. You're so right, DJ. <laughs> well, I uh, wanted you to be the first to see the new stationery. Now I'll have Miss Hanson see that every department receives a supply. Uh, Miss Hanson? Yes, my new secretary. She started to work this morning. But where's Eloise Tracy? Eloise? Uh, she's gone. Has another job. I got it for her myself. You did? Yes, yes. You know, Eloise Tracy is too attractive to work in a business office. But uh, I uh, I didn't want to fire her until I'd lined her up somewhere else. Oh, that was decent of you, T.J. I placed her with one of our biggest accounts. Ramirez, the, uh, the coffee king. Ramirez? But he's located in Brazil. Yes, he wants an American secretary to take back with him. It's just the job for Eloise, don't you think? Give her a chance to travel and all that. Yeah, yeah, just the job. The news strikes you like a blow in the face, doesn't it, John? Your father-in-law is more aware than you've realized, and more clever. He's arranged to put Eloise out of your reach for good. That's why you're trembling with rage as you leave Dawson's office, check the files, and learn that Ramirez is stopping at the Seneca Hotel on Wilshire. You leave immediately and drive out there. On your call to his suite on the house phone, Eloise answers. She protests to being busy and cannot see you at once. You're pacing the lobby restlessly when she finally steps out of the elevator looking pale and tense. John, you shouldn't have come here. I've got to talk to you, Eloise. Dawson just told me everything. Where can we go to be alone? I only have a few minutes, John. Mr. Ramirez is dictating. Please, Eloise, sit down. Let's talk this over. There's nothing to talk about, John. I've made up my mind. I'm doing what's best for both of us. But you can't do it, Eloise. You can't go to Brazil. It's so far away. That's where I'm going, John. But you can get a job here in Los Angeles. I'll get you one. No. No, that won't do. Eloise, you, you'll have me. I can take care of you if necessary. No, John. I thought it over carefully. You must make a clean break. I can't live without you, Eloise. You know that. Oh, yes, you can, John. You, you'll have a good life. Your partnership in the Dawson firm. Money. Security. But, Eloise, if I can't share it with you, what's the use? Don't talk like that, John. You're not making it any easier for us. Please, please listen to me. Eloise. No. We've got to face facts, that's all. And I have to consider my own future. Mr. Ramirez will introduce me to people in South America. And... Well, they, they fixed it up very nicely between them, haven't they? Ramirez and Dawson. John. Can't you see? It, it's just DJ's trick to separate us. John, you're married. I intend to be someday. Oh, I see. The queen of a coffee plantation. Oh, and I with my nagging queen, Lillian. Oh, there's no use being bitter. Please, I, I have to go back up. When do you leave? We sail in two weeks. Mr. Ramirez has business here that he must take care of first. Then we'll see each other again. No, John. I, I don't think so. But Eloise... We'll make it goodbye now. It's better this way. Goodbye, John. Think of me, won't you? You're too upset to go back to the office, aren't you, John? You can't let DJ see you this way. And so you call the office, then drive on out to your home in the valley. On the way, you try to think things out. One thing is certain, you must not lose Eloise. She loves you, you know that. And by the time you reach the house, 
you've decided to talk to Lillian about a divorce. As you enter the living room, Mrs. Alberts, the housekeeper, calls out to you. Mr. Granger? Uh, yes, Mrs. Alberts. Oh, I've got to talk to you privately, sir. Now, while Mrs. Granger is busy out in her studio. Oh, what, what's it about, Mrs. Alberts? Well, it's about her, Mrs. Granger. I'm afraid something terrible is going to happen, well, now, sir. Now, please calm yourself, Mrs. Alberts. What, what are you talking about? Oh, it's just awful. I thought everything was going along so well. Mrs. Granger's been cheerful and calm, but this afternoon, I found it. You found what? The bottle of poison. She's going to kill herself. Well, that's ridiculous. She's been saying that for years. No, no, it's true. I found the bottle in her room. It was marked poison. A hydro something. I can't remember the name. Uh, where is the bottle? Uh, let me see it. Well, that's just it. I can't. It's gone. Gone? Yes. I went to telephone you about it, but you weren't in your office. And then when I went back to get the poison, it, it was gone. I see. Yes. Uh, well, uh, never mind, Mrs. Alberts. I'll take care of everything. Oh, well, perhaps you could have a talk with Mrs. Granger, hmm? Yes, yes. Uh, but for now, please, just put the whole thing out of your mind. Uh, yes, sir. This changes your plans, doesn't it, John? And suddenly you decide not to mention divorce to Lillian, not for the present. Because you might work things out another way. But you have made another decision. And later that night, after Lillian has gone to bed, you again talk to the old housekeeper. A vacation, Mr. Granger? Oh, well, I, I, I hadn't thought of such a thing. Do you think it would be wise for me to leave Mrs. Granger just now? Well, uh, I'm going to take some time off from the office so I can be with her more, Mrs. Alberts. Oh, now she'd like that, I'm sure. Yes, I, I'm going to spend the next couple of weeks showing her a good time. We'll go on some little trips together, and she can take some film with that new 16-millimeter camera. But what about the housework? Oh, we'll manage. Lillian likes to cook, you know. Oh, yes, she does. She always insists on making your desserts. Yeah, they're darn good desserts, too. <laughs> yes, she has a secret recipe. Uh, still, sir, I don't like to take a vacation just oh, now. Oh, now, now, it's all settled, Mrs. Alberts. Do you good. Well, <laughs> I would like to visit my sister in Ohio. Yes, I haven't seen her for years, Well, sir. see her by all means. The trip will be a present from us. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Granger. I'll give you my address. And if you need me, you just call. I'll come right back home. With the housekeeper away, everything should work out beautifully, shouldn't it, John? In the days that follow Mrs. Albert's departure, you watch Lillian closely. She does seem nervous, even depressed. Still, you can't believe she actually intends taking her own life. But the important thing is what the others think, isn't it, John? Yes. And you can't wait too much longer now. Because in your few attempts to see Eloise Tracy, she refuses to talk to you. She'll soon leave for Brazil unless you change your plan. One evening shortly before Mrs. Alberts is due to return, you and Lillian are finishing dinner. How did you like the dessert, John? Excellent as usual. Now, what is it, Lillian? My secret recipe. You really do like it, don't you? Oh, you bet I do. Well, aren't you having any? No, I've had my sweets for today. The chocolates you put in my studio. Oh, well, <laughs> there are only a few. But, uh, you know, you, you should stick to your diet. To tell you the truth, John, I've stopped worrying about it. These last weeks have been wonderful. I've been very happy. Well, I'm glad, Lillian. Photography is very interesting, and I have all sorts of plans. And now, for our trip tomorrow... Oh, I... the trip... I'm sorry, Lillian. I'm, I'm afraid we'll have to postpone the trip. I, I've got to go to the office tomorrow. Oh. Well, that's all right, dear. I have a lot I can do. I'll develop the film we took the other day, and then I can work on some redeveloping fluid. I've been intending to do that for some time. I bought the hydrocyanic acid several weeks ago. You were right, weren't you, John? Lillian had no intention of taking her life, none at all. It was merely a foolish suspicion on the part of Mrs. Alberts. The acid was for her photography. And now you decide that you'll have to take matters in your own hands. It's an idea you've been toying with, isn't it? A simple, effective idea. With some of that poison acid injected into the chocolates that you put in Lillian's studio. It will fit in so perfectly with Mrs. Albert's suspicions when she testifies later that she found the poison in Lillian's room and feared a suicide trial. That night after Lillian goes to bed, you take care of everything, carefully injecting the chocolates with the poison and putting them in the regular place in his studio. 
In the morning as you leave for the office, Lillian is in excellent spirits. Well, I, I've got to go, dear. I'm sorry we had to cancel our trip today. Oh, it doesn't matter. I have a full day planned. I'll be in the studio all day. Well, don't work too hard. No, I'll try not to. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Alberts is coming back this morning. Oh? Today? Yes. Well, isn't that sooner than expected? Well, I had a telegram from her a couple of days ago. I forgot to mention it. I see. Uh, what time does a train get in? At 10. She'll take a taxi from the station. She'll be here about 11. 11. I'm going to leave a note for her in the kitchen telling her I'll be out in the studio all day and not to disturb me. Oh, well, that's a very good idea, Lillian. A very good idea. The morning passes slowly at the office, doesn't it, John? You try to keep your mind on business, but it's out of the question as you wonder what's happening at home. Wonder if Mrs. Alberts arrived, if she saw Lillian's note. You toy with the papers on your desk, dictate a few uninspired letters. Finally, it's 12 o'clock, then 12.30, then 1. You decide to go out to lunch, but can scarcely eat. Then as you return to the office, you meet your father-in-law in the reception room. Uh, Ramirez called while you were out, John. It seems he wants to reword one of the clauses in our contract. Probably just a detail. Ramirez. Oh, yes, he sails tomorrow, doesn't he? Yes, in the morning, you, uh, you better drive out to the Seneca Hotel right away. Right away. If it's anything important, uh, give me a ring. Eloise. Oh, John. John, I'm so glad you've come. But I've called you so often. I've wanted to see I you. I know, but I thought... John, it's just no use. I'm not going to Brazil. I can't. Well, at least done. Have you told Mr. Ramirez? Not yet. He's out. You mean he doesn't want to see me? No, John. I just used the contract as an excuse to get you to come. I wanted to talk to you. To see how you felt. Oh, darling, are you sure I'm doing the right thing by staying here in town? Yes, Eloise. I'm sure... Surer than I've ever been. You go over matters in your mind as you drive back to the office, don't you, John? Though that part at least is settled, Eloise will remain in town. When you enter your own offices, you know that something is wrong, that they've received word. There's a strained atmosphere which you can almost feel. And the voice of the receptionist borders on hysteria as she tells you that Mr. Dawson wants to see you at once. John, my boy, John. Well, DJ, what's the matter? I tried to reach you at the Seneca and you'd left. Well, what is it? What's happened? It's Lillian, John. Lillian? She's dead. Mrs. Albert's phoned. Lillian? Dead? I can't believe it. It's true. But why did she do it? She, she was in good spirits. I've tried. I've... Oh, it wasn't that. It, it was an accident. An accident? Yes, a fire. She was working in her studio. Mrs. Alberts happened to look out of the kitchen window, and she saw smoke coming out of the studio. But the fire, how could it have started? Oh, a cigarette, they believe. She must have fainted and dropped a cigarette on some film. She suffocated. Yeah. I simply can't believe it. Poor Lillian. And she was so happy. We were getting along so beautifully. I... I won't forget that part of it, John. You've been wonderful. You kept your part of the bargain. It wasn't just a bargain, DJ. Not anymore. We've been very happy these past weeks. I won't forget it, I promise you. You'll stay on as my partner. Whatever you wish, DJ. Reduces engine wear 50%. It's today's biggest news in motor oil. Reduces engine wear 50%. It's today's best news for motorists. Yes, new Signal Premium, the amazing new heavy-duty type motor oil that reduces engine wear due to lubrication 
can mean wonderful things to you in both savings and performance. Reducing engine wear 50% means your car can now run twice as many miles before needing an overhaul due to engine wear. So new Signal Premium saves you on upkeep. Reducing engine wear 50% means that your car will keep its like new pep and power twice as long. So new Signal Premium increases driving pleasure. Yet this superior quality lubricant that gives you all these extra benefits is yours at no increase in price at Signal Service Station. So remember where to get your next oil change at a Signal Station. Remember the oil to change to new Signal Premium, the heavy-duty type motor oil that reduces engine wear due to lubrication, 50%. It's all over, isn't it, John? Your patience has been rewarded, hasn't it? And the extra good fortune of the fire hid all traces of the poison chocolates. With everyone completely convinced that Lillian died in the accidental burning of the little photography studio. You're certain that it happened another way, aren't you? Yes, that she became dizzy after taking the poison candy. Dizzy and unsteady. And that's why she dropped her cigarette from her shaking hand. But it doesn't matter now, does it, John? Even Lillian's father believes in you, intends a reward for your faithfulness to his daughter. And you know at last that you and Eloise will soon be together, and that you'll be able to afford all of the things both of you want. You're almost unable to hide the inner joy you feel as Mrs. Alberts comes in. Shall I take the tray, Mr. Granger? Why, you've scarcely eaten anything. I, I know, Mrs. Alberts, I'm sorry. Oh, but you must keep up your strength, sir. Well, yes, yes, I suppose so. Yes. Anyway, you did eat most of your dessert. That would have pleased Mrs. Granger. Yes, perhaps it would. She always enjoyed seeing you eat her secret recipe. Probably because she couldn't eat any sweets herself. Mm -hmm. I often felt guilty about it. I can just see her now, melting that candy... Uh, melting candy? Uh, what candy? Why, the chocolates you put in her studio for. She never touched a bite of them, sir. What? Well, she didn't want to hurt your feelings. She always melted your chocolates down and made them into your dessert. My dessert? Yes. Another of her secret recipes. Poor dear. Why, one of the last things she did this very afternoon was to bring in the candy and make that dessert you just finished eating. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at the same time. Signal Oil Company has asked me to remind you, now that school days are here again, it's even more important to drive at sensible speeds, be courteous, and obey traffic regulations. It may save a life, possibly a child. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman as The Whistler, Hi Averback, Gene Cagney, Monty Margetts, Martha Wentworth, Ted Von Elts, and Hal Dawson. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen with story by George Adrian and Carol Nix. Music by Wilbur Hatch and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember to tune in at this same time next Sunday when the Signal Oil Company will bring you another strange story by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. Stay tuned now for the Horace Height Show, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network.